So uh, what are we drinking? Well, this is a... Uh some Starbucks coffee, uh, <laughs> and uh, you, you and I are both using uh, National Park mugs. Good on a cold Northwest day. Has it really been 25 years since you were first elected governor? That's right, November of 1996. So almost 25 years, yeah. So our babies were all born while we were at the mansion. It was this culmination of this great American story this guy who grew up on Yesler Terrace and went to Franklin High School. It really typifies the story of so many people here in the state of Washington, immigrant background. Like you're walking back in time. The idea that you were the first, the first Chinese American governor. Did, were, you, were you running for office thinking, hey, I'm gonna make history here? No, I never, I never really thought about that. I never would have dreamed that I'd, that I'd ever have a, a chance to meet the president of China. You had, a, you had a, a nice little journey after that. I never thought that I would join the Obama administration. It eventually morphed, though, <laughs> into something more. Right. What had happened is that uh, Ambassador Huntsman, uh, John Huntsman, former governor of Utah, Republican, suddenly announced that he was stepping down as Barack Obama's, President Obama's ambassador to China. So, so then they said, well, we got luck. <laughs> well, and it's funny we're drinking coffee because the first thing you did that, that raised eyebrows in China was you got your own coffee. You know, what happened is that we were in the airport on the way, uh, getting ready to board the, the plane to China. Um, and and I, was, I had a backpack on and, and uh, my youngest daughter in, in tow. And, oh, we better make a run at Starbucks. But that's very unusual in China because all the high-ranking government officials, from even mayors uh, to uh, bureaucrats, high-level bureaucrats, you know, the, the people buy their own coffee, buy the coffee for them. What do you think the relationship is right now between the U.S. and China when it comes to, to trade in particular? Well, it's really, it's very, very fragile and it's pretty much <clears throat> at its lowest point in decades. When we put a tariff on a, those Chinese products, it's really hurt American companies. Our, our objectives were right, strategy all wrong. The way that the then president referred to coronavirus um, ha has led to events that we've seen transpire in the last uh, part of this year, in the, the first part of this year. Do you think it's directly tied to the rhetoric that we heard in 2020? Oh, uh, uh, unquestionably, it all, you know, words matter. When you have words from, you know, your highest elected officials, include especially the presidents, mocking the, uh, the virus and saying it's the China virus, the Wuhan virus, the Kung flu um, a virus. Uh, and then you have policies that basically say that all Chinese students coming to the United States, wanting to come to the United States, are spies. It creates this scapegoating, uh, this, this negative image of not just Chinese Americans, but all Asian Americans. You've put on the leadership cap again at Bellevue College. I've always had a passion and an interest in, in education and especially higher education policy. And, and there's something very special and exciting about college campuses. I know that some people have looked at the fact that you're still in the leadership game. Here's the guy who's gonna run for Seattle mayor. <laughs> well, I live on the east side. I, <laughs> I live on the east side. You have to be a resident of Seattle to run for mayor. So you're not gonna run for Seattle mayor is what you're saying. I'm still a Seattleite at heart, but. I, I, I'm, I'm here on the east side for the next several years. Thank you for sharing this Starbucks <laughs> with me on a chilly northwest day. Oh, it's not too bad. It's a little bit gray, but thank you. It's still kind of warm. Yeah.